so car car hit my left side and like I I got in the motorcycle accident. Like I kind of realized, okay, no, I don't have leg and like, and what's next? Well, uh, like which leg and from where? <laughs> I didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't realize. Like. Uh, If you want to do something in your life, you have to do that. There is nobody else to do that for you. And that's that's a fact. You have to try and fail and try and fail and try and fail. And uh, at some stage, you can maybe reach your goal. In 2009, I never ever thought that uh, I will be a pro snowboarder someday, an X Games gold medalist, and like Crystal Cup club holder and world champ. I never thought that. Hey everybody, it's Tommy from Surfer of Life. And today's guest is Matti Suurhamari. You are three times world champion, three times World Cup winner, and a participant of the Paralympics. Yeah. Matti, welcome to Surfer of Life. <laughs> it's great to have you here. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad to be here. How are the crystal triplets treating you at home? Are they in a safe place? Yeah, they are in the really safe place. Actually, it's it's my it's it's in my parents' house. They have a like a well, the place, place for all those three clubs, and they are like, they are treated really well. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be in a safe place. I hold one, once in my, in my hands, and it it felt great, even though I have nothing to do with those mm -hmm. as an athlete. But let's not tell Koyokoski about it. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> all right, um, it's it's so great to have you here. Uh, you are a snowboarder. And so I always like to ask people about their start as a snowboarder so, or skiers or whatever they do in their lives. That what was your first touch on snowboarding? Yeah, my first touch uh, in the snowboarding was uh, year 99. It was actually in my hometown, uh, like little little ski resort in my hometown called, called Mellomäki. It was like just, just really small. Uh, small small resort with with two slopes and uh, I was I was skiing I was like I started skiing like uh, four, four years old or something like that I've been skiing a lot but uh, I was in the, in the slopes with my friends and uh, someone someone got snowboard and I was like what like I was like really excited about that like what's that like can I can I I have to I had to get in snowboard. I had to test that thing, and uh, well, I <laughs> I went back home and said to my parents like like I really need to have a snowboard. And I want to have a snowboard, and uh, then it, then it came that day when I got got my first snowboard and 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 tested that, and I, and I I was I was hooked right away, and uh, yeah. That that's how it was, and and uh, I got my snowboard in '99, the first snowboard in '99, and I, I was like, from the first test, I was so good in the snowboarding, and and yeah, that's how it goes. That how it went. Like then we had like really close uh, friend group who got all like who all got snowboard, and uh, we pretty much spent all of our time. In small slopes, just having fun and snowboarding. Riding. I forgot the very important detail when I was introducing yourself. You're also an X Games gold medalist. Yeah, that's so true. I gotta say it now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> before we forget about it. We're well, not gonna forget it, but anyways. <laughs> but yeah, so what about the other sports uh, when you were a child? Did you have any other sports? Yeah, actually, actually, pretty lot. I was like, I was doing plenty of stuff when I was a kid, uh, like like competitive swimming, 
to alpine skiing and like motorsport. I was trying a karting, karting car and and everything like that. And ice hockey was a really big thing in my uh, in my childhood. I was playing ice hockey until until was it fifteen or sixteen years old and like really competitive competitively and. Uh, but, I, but after all those sports, when I got the snowboard, it was like <laughs> all the other things just just like uh, went down and, and then there was just snowboarding. But I don't know, snowboard, snowboarding at that time, that was just like having fun with friends and, and uh, not going into competitions or anything like that. It was just just having fun with the friends and of course like we had some, some, some kind of races uh, and some kind of competitions with our friends, like who, who hit the biggest kicker and everything like that. But nothing, nothing like official competitions. It, it was just, just having fun then. Can you tell me what was about snowboarding that really hooked you? That you <clears throat> wanted to sort of stop all the other activities because this was so much fun. Was it fun or was it something else? Yeah, well, it it was fun. Like I mean, in snowboarding, it was fun, and you can uh, you can challenge yourself the way you want to. There is no like kind of rule book what you have to do, and uh, you have to be in this spot when you're this age, and blah blah blah. It was kind of just free thing. Like you have to snowboard, do whatever you want to, and. Uh, and just challenge yourself if you want to, or just have fun if you want to. There was so many options to do. Do uh, so. I think that was the thing. What was the most like? What what hooked me in the snowboarding? Not so disciplined on the other sports. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. What about speed? Have you always liked speed? Yeah, the speed. The speed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would say that speed is really important thing for me. Like from the childhood, like I've always liked uh, when we are going fast with some something. Uh, like I mean, with the karting car or snowmobile or or anything like that. It's always like yeah, you know, faster than we uh, like. Always when we're going fast, it's it's like the biggest smile uh, smile in my in my face and. And I think in the snowboarding it was the same thing. I, I, I've never been too good in like freestyle snowboarding. I mean, just doing tricks and stuff. I always like, <laughs> I always crash it pretty, pretty bad. I, I always get the like the crash part of the videos, <laughs> <laughs> things like that. But, but when we did like. <coughs> like speed competitions like yeah who's first in the in the lift or or something like that i i was i was always first and i really like like go fast with the snowboard um, like back in the days back in the days uh, already so so the speed speed has been really big thing for me with uh, with every sport at some point you got your uh, motorcycle license yeah when did you get that well, I was uh, I was twenty five, uh, twenty one years old, and actually, actually, I I was like, I've been dreaming about motorcycling from the childhood, and uh, I was really keen about motorcycles, always, and uh, and uh, I I bought my first motorcycle when I was twenty years old. I I got in in that my car as I did I wasn't. Uh, like old enough uh, in that in that time, so I had to wait one year to get the like the big motorcycle license, and I was just like, just like watching my motorcycle in the car. I was like, someday we will go out and <laughs> and things like that. And well, then I got then I got my motorcycle license uh, when I was twenty one one year old and. Uh, and uh, yeah, I could say that the motorcycle was one of my best friends at that at that time. What kind of motorbike you had? 
Uh, well, I had like custom bike, like the not the chopper one. It was it was Suzuki Intruder 800cc, but I was like building that in my own way, kind of. So it was like kind of special for me, and uh, and uh, well, yeah, custom bike. It was custom bike, not not too fast. I mean. Yeah, well, fast enough, but <laughs> like not the sport bike. You didn't have any racing bike because you loved speed, but speed was enough with that. Custom yeah, bike. well, yeah, speed was enough with that custom bike, and I, uh, I had that kind of mindset in my mind that I'm not, I'm not racing in the just in the streets. Like if I want to go racing, I go to the uh, racetrack, but but that was. Uh, more like more like lifestyle thing of, or way way of life thing like i i i just like motorcycles and like kind of build the motorcycles and things like that so it was it was just just hobby not the not the speed thing. all right yeah. <clears throat> riding a motorcycle at some point it really changed your life and so 2009 happened something can you yeah. tell me about that yeah well it was it was 3rd of August 2009. I was 20, 23 years old. Then I was uh, I was living in Tampere at, the, at that moment, and I was I was just uh, cruising with my motorcycle. Uh, it was a nice summer day, and uh, I was I was riding with my motorcycle uh, through the through the city, and and uh, and yeah. Then it was a uh, one crossroad. I was like like uh going through the crossroad watching that that uh my my way was like free to go but uh when i when i get get in the middle of crossroad i realized that uh, yeah there is coming car pretty fast towards me and and uh then it was yeah really big really big boom and uh, then i found myself from the from the middle of Crossyard, like finding my bike and <laughs> and things like that. So, so car car hit my left side and like I I got in the motorcycle accident. Can you remember what were your first thoughts after that crash when you kind of realized that you are on the asphalt? Yeah, and there was a big boom, like you said. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I, it was funny. It was kind of funny feeling. Uh, because like people like in the movies when when the crash happened it's always slow motion and it, it, for me it's it it was like that like it's just like half a second or something like that but, but it felt like a minute when you realize that, that that car is coming towards you you try to do things hop hop off the bike or hop off and like jump uh, like high enough that car is not uh, hitting you, but you really can't do anything. And uh, and when the impact happened, uh, it felt like, uh, well, for me, it felt like you get a like, really big hit in the in the ice hockey rink or or, <laughs> or things like that. And and uh, I think I I was knocked out a couple of minutes or something like that. But when I woke up, I was like. Uh, trying to get up and first first thought was like where is my bike <laughs> like I want to see my bike and uh, like uh, somebody hit me and hit my bike and now my bike is <laughs> like how how can I ever fix my bike that was the first thing and the second thing was like, where is the car driver? I want I want to talk to <laughs> talk <laughs> with the car driver now. And then like the first first helpers like was running was running towards me and and yeah like shouting that like just lay down, don't move, don't move. And I was thinking like, what the fuck? Of course I can move. Like I want to go home. I, like I want to <laughs> I want to leave this place right now. I didn't realize that I I got hurt there. I don't know what. Well, the human body is pretty 
pretty am- amazing thing when that kind of things happened. Like I didn't felt any pain or anything like that. But but yeah, but well, then then the first helpers uh, were coming coming to me and like just keep me in the asphalt and uh, and uh, and we were waiting to like the paramedics and things. Like you were worried about your best friend, your motorcycle. Yeah, well, that's, that's good. Yeah. You have to be worried about your buddies. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But yeah, uh, when the when the first first ambulance came, in that point, I don't know what happened, but like uh, in that point, it it started hurting a lot, and I was like kind of passing out and things like that. But I still remember everything from from the like the ac- uh, accident place to the to the hospital. So so I didn't pass out really bad. What was the point you realized that there's something wrong with your leg? Well, uh, well, the first paramedic, uh, like they they were lifting me in the car. I, I was asking like, well, like how how is my leg? How is my leg? Can you tell how is my leg? And he said like, uh, he said like, well, I can tell you that you are not driving a motorcycle in this summer or summer anymore and then that was like all right well that there, there have to be something <laughs> something more than just uh, just like small cut and uh, well then, then we then we got in the in the hospital and all the, all the doctors everybody was like uh, like it seems like they had uh, they they were in a hurry. So then I realized, like, okay, they are not running if everything is good, but now they are running, <laughs> and uh, uh, like it was just small time when they were like getting everything ready, and then we, then we were going to the surgery, and I, uh, and the uh, and the doctor said, and the doctor said that like your your leg is looking really bad right now. We. We will do our best, but I'm I'm not promising anymore. Like any anything, then I realized that okay, it's it it is pretty bad. And then I just said like okay, well you you know what to do. I can't say anything like just save my leg or something like that if if that's not possible. So so I just said like do what you have to do, and like I I I have to manage with that. <laughs> Well, that's a good mindset. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about because you remember, remember this so clearly? Uh, did it take a long time for you to recover from that memory, or has it been haunting you at all after that accident? Well, not really. Not really, because like I decided when when I buy a motorcycle, I decided that like it's a fact if you are if you are driving with the motorcycle in the traffic, there is like hundreds of uh, cars everything and if you get in the crash you always get hurt even if you are right you always get hurt you are always the loser in the in the crash so I kind of accept accept that uh, thing when I buy the motorcycle and when I went out with the motorcycle so so actually when it happened, I was like, okay, this was my choice. I was, uh, I was uh, out with my motorcycle. I, uh, I, I was driving a motorcycle. I, I knew it that if I get in the crash, uh, I will lose, lose there, and it, it will hurt. <laughs> so it was kind of easier to think about that thing, uh, like and accept that thing that uh, I lost my leg and everything uh, because I was I was uh, thinking like I I yeah I was thinking that already like I had the mindset in my mind like if, if something happened it, it will be something bad so it was easier to go over how did it feel when the doctor told you that we can save your leg that there was no options well mm, uh, I was waking up from the, like, it was, I think, the next 
next night after the surgery I was uh, I was uh, waking up from the I don't know how it's called in English but like like a, in the care like I don't know I will say this this in Finnish but the whole other stuff yeah yeah but uh, I was waking up from there and uh, and the nurse told me that the nurse told me that they they had to uh, cut my leg off because it was so like the damage was so bad and at that moment I don't know what what trucks they gave trucks they gave me but I was like well uh, like which leg and from where <laughs> I didn't realize I didn't realize like uh, like which leg and from where it it was cut it off and 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 I didn't felt sorry about all like I was just like somewhere else and uh, and then I then I called to my girlfriend and uh, I was just like confused because she was like she was crying and she was feeling so bad and I was like what <laughs> like why <laughs> but yeah after after a couple of days when when uh, when I kind of realized what happened and 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 like I was just laying in the bed in the hospital and and, and kind of clearing my mind from from those from those tracks I, I like I kind of realized okay now I don't have leg and like and what's next because I, I don't have a clue what has happened next because uh, I don't have any friends with the disabilities I like in my family there is nobody with a with a with a disabilities or anything like I don't know anything about this like like what what kind of future I have like uh, do I have to use wheelchair or or how it's going to be? And uh, then I was just laying in the bed, got my laptop, and uh, and then then I was googling like, what is to be am- <laughs> to be an amputee, and like like what amputated people can do with the below knee prosthetic and and <clears throat> things like that. And actually there. Actually, there from from YouTube, I found uh, found a video from from uh, uh, from US guy called Emma Strong, and he was skateboarding and snowboarding with uh, with the one leg, and I was like, oh, like he can do that kind of stuff, like and and because I had <coughs> I had a really strong snowboarding background and and. Uh, and it was really big thing for me the snowboarding i i got really really excited about that like like somebody can do that with uh with uh one leg and with the prosthetic leg so so <clears throat> in that moment i decided okay okay i don't have excuse because somebody some uh, somebody in this world can do that so i don't have excuse to say like i can do things with the one leg and uh, yeah that was the like that was the moment uh, what changed my kind of changed my life and I was like okay I don't have leg anymore and and for sure it's not growing back so I have to accept that and 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 manage that and just just find a way and uh, that's how it was it feels like you are a person that doesn't feel sorry for yourself that much that as you're telling me about this story that you lost your leg and you're just kind of accepting it and go straight to action like mm-hmm. what to do next mm-hmm. and not pitying yourself have you always been like this well well kind of yeah maybe kind of because like i i think that uh just just laying down and and beating yourself and and uh, like really feeling sorry about yourself it's not that's not going anywhere like and and uh, if you want to do something in your life you have to do that 
there is nobody else to do that for you. So, so of course there wasn't like plenty of options. After motorcycle crash, I was like a young guy, twenty three years old, old, old young guy. I I could have just stay home and cry and 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 just like be sorry about myself and and like yeah my life is gone because I lost a leg that's but that's just a leg it's like I mean somebody do that and they they can do that like I'm I'm not I'm not blaming at all but it's not I was thinking that I'm 23 years old if I'm just saying staying at home it's going to be really really long life if I'm just just crying at home and 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 uh, being frustrated, so I just decided like, okay, now now I just have to want to find a way to do things and accept and manage with this. I think you are a perfect example for many people out there, probably many listeners also that. Uh, when you kind of feel there's a lot of people that they feel is and I can't do this and I can't just get up and do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Like you, you, you don't know if you didn't try. That's that's what I've been thinking always. Like, if you have dreams and uh, things, what you have, what you want to do, and you you are dreaming about <coughs> those, and you say yourself like, yeah, I. I can't do that. I want. I, I would love to do that, but I can't do that. How you know if you don't try? And uh, I've been always thinking like, just just go out and try, and uh, be be like like you can fail also, and you will fail. That's for sure. If you if you try new things, it's not going to the goal in the first try, and that's that's a fact you have to try and fail and try and fail and try and fail and uh, at some stage you can maybe reach your goal I hear you <laughs> you think people like to stay on the comfort zone mostly that, but do you think that people should go out of their comfort zone and be more brave to try new things and maybe achieve more in their life if they're just thinking about it and not really trying yeah because like what I think like in uh, if I'm always in my comfort zone, it's just like mm, I don't know. I'm 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 that kind of people who get bored if you're on on the comfort zone always, because uh, because like if you jump in the cold water uh, out of your comfort zone, that makes life exciting, and 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 then you find things like you have to manage and survive and like find your way some like some kind of somehow and uh, I think that that makes life exciting and that and people should go and and try and follow their dreams and don't don't be scared about their dreams you think you can do it in any age you don't have to be young you can also do it when you're older yeah yeah I, well, I think age is, age is just a number. So, if you have dreams, just go and and try. Because like, um, like, I don't want to say, like, I don't want to say ever that I should have do something. Like, uh, I want to say like I tried. Maybe I failed, but I tried. And. Uh, also like like I mean if you don't try you don't know like I said earlier so if you go out and try and follow your dreams maybe you can reach the uh, reach those dreams uh, well <laughs> when I was like in 2009 I never ever thought that uh, I will be a pro snowboarder someday an X Games gold medalist and like Crystal Cup club holder and world champ. I never thought that. And for like now I'm sitting here with you talking about this thing. So 
So everything can happen. Just go out and try. Yeah, really go out and try. <laughs> well, you really went out of your comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, let's go back a little bit to the hospital because now you realize that this is the situation and now you figured out that, okay, this is the path I'm going to take. I see this guy, at, he's amazing, he can do things like this. How was the beginning? How was the first experience on the rehab session? Well, it, it was really hard. I have to say it was really, really hard. I, I was struggling with that. With the healing, all the all the like wounds, uh, like didn't help, and uh, and it was infect infections and all kind of problems, and uh, I actually got my first prostatic like like nine months after crash, which is pretty long time, and uh, first steps with the prostatic like was just I was feeling like this. This could never, ever, like, uh, like, I mean, they, uh, like, it, it, it was just feeling so painful and uh, weird and everything. I was thinking about like I, I can't do anything with this, with this leg, and how, how somebody can snowboard and skateboard and just like, like jump flips and everything with this like how how because it felt so painful but uh, I was just like day after day just like trying to walk and 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 just training just trying to get all the frustrated uh, th like thoughts away from my mind and just go on and walk and train and actually like it was really painful and I um, like I got in the surgery. I think last surgery was in the February 2011. So from 2009 to the February 2011, it was like kind of rehab process, and uh, and I didn't do actually do any sports in that uh, that part of like rehab thing. So, but after that last. Uh, surgery it felt it felt really good I mean it was a really new feeling like okay this is not hurting anymore this is not hurting anymore and uh, and then <laughs> it was funny because I I got like really hungry about all the sports like I, I was I was like okay can can I do this uh, I, I buy it like uh, road bike and I was like starting a road bike in and like can I can I do like 100 kilometers like 100 kilometers workout and I had to test all this kind of stuff and 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 can I can I do rock climbing can I do like can I can I go skating like ice hockey things uh, and and like all kind of sports I had to go through all kind of sports and uh, it was it was kind of crazy, but like it was, I think it was part of the, part of the process. I had to like tell myself that okay, I can do this, I can do this, and and there is nothing what I can't do. And uh, and then then it came uh, 2012 springtime, 2012. Uh, and uh, I called my old snowboarding friend. Like, yeah, this is the, this is the time, like this is the day when we have to try the snowboarding again. Like, can, can you come with me and uh, like watch behind me a little bit? And uh, yeah, I got my uh, old snowboard from the garage and like we went out actually in the same slope when we were uh, snowboarding uh, when we were kids, and uh, and then we go to get uh, get there, like in the top of the hill, and I strapped in, and, and my friend was just like, yeah, have fun, and pushed me on the slope, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, the first meters was kind of kind of scary, kind of uh, sketchy feeling. 
but when I got the speed and and uh, like just just carving there, it it felt it felt really good, and uh, it was like okay, like nothing changed, nothing changed, and and this this is pretty awesome, and uh, I can still say that's one of my one of my greatest uh, laps what I what I have uh, what I had uh, with snowboard the first time after 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 my accident then I realized like okay I can do this this feels pretty awesome and like this is this feels same uh, same than what it was before so so uh, in the top of, uh, in, in in the bottom of the uh, of the slopes I like like there was coming like thousands of ideas in my mind like if I can do this like and it feels that great like I, I really can snowboard so uh, I knew it that they are like competing in the snowboard cross in the in the, uh, in the par- parasite and they are you know, touring the world cup and everything and I was like yeah like uh, like why not why not i i should try that and actually i think not in the same time but uh, the same day but in in the next day i call it to the finnish paralympic committee and like hey this is mati <laughs> and like do you have adaptive snowboarding things in finland and then they said like actually we don't have any adaptive snowboarding things in finland and i was like now you have now you have I'm here let's let's start things and and then it's, then it started like that and uh, and uh, yeah great yeah it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a pretty crazy time again like you just go go ahead and try you won't lose anything yeah yeah this is a uh, I interviewed one uh, one guy from Holland uh, top DJ and he actually has his uh, other leg yeah uh, and using a prosthetic and the same kind of like you have yeah. and he told me that he's actually it kind of saved his life that he's way more active than he was before and he's doing windsurfing and everything yeah. again and so yeah. it's it's great to hear that but during that time you told me that it, it took two years for you to recover and you can't even use your leg because I know that the, I work as a physiotherapist it doesn't it only takes a couple of weeks or a yeah. mo- couple of months even though without a prosthetic that you just lose all your muscles yeah, and things yeah, yeah. and you said it was hurting and it was very hard so how were you able to mentally handle that thing for two years to, it's a long long period yeah it, it was it was a really long period and uh, <clears throat> but I think the the biggest things was my was my family and my friends and my my girlfriend at that at that moment I it, it was like because they they were saying like from the first day in the hospital they were saying like you are the same Mati for us like we don't care if you have leg or not and <coughs> and and it was like that. I mean, it it like I had really bad days during that like two years. Uh, I can say that I, I, I'm not always like just smiling and everything's good and like just go out out from your comfort zone. It's not always like that. I had bad days too, but in those bad days, like I can say that family and my friends was really really important and they were they were pushing me pushing me and and uh, also like they were getting me out from that like uh, thinking box like even if I was hurting like my leg was hurting and everything they were just taking me out and and uh, didn't really care about like what like what was going with my legs so it was really really big and important thing for friends and family well you recovered very well and you called it the <laughs> Finnish Association 
And it actually only took you two years and you were competing in the World Cup and you did well. Tell me about the World Cup, the first experience. Yeah, yeah. The first the first World Cup experience was like well, two thousand twelve I called to the Paralympic Committee and and, and um and the things were like started happen. They they linked me with the Snowboard Federation and and uh, and with the Border Cross team and I I I get chance to I got chance to train with the Border Cross team and travel with them and uh, it was really uh, it was really really good time for me and uh, I learned a lot in 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 really short period and and I get better rider but then uh, the first World Cup was in November two thousand thirteen. Uh, the main thing it was it was in Netherlands uh, that indoor ski slope I uh, call it uh, Land Cross in the world. There was a uh, like season opener World Cup for for para snowboarding, and the main thing was just go there and get the classification because in disabled sports you have to have a classification. And uh, and I went there, got the classified. The par snowboarding and and uh, and got in the race, got in the World Cup race. At that moment, there there wasn't any any qualification in the World Cup. So if if you just had a, uh, the classification, you 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 was able to go to the World Cup. So I got the classification. I went to the race, and uh, for me, like. For me and everybody else, it was a big surprise. I got third place for uh, in the World Cup in my first race. Everybody was like, "Who is this guy? Who is this guy?" Like we have done this like seven years now, like <laughs> throwing a World Cup, and there is like just uh, like the same people in the podium, and and from like out of from like out of from nowhere, there is just coming one Finnish guy and like jump at the podium and it was like I was like like what just happened like I'm standing at the podium in my first race ever in snowboarding and it's a world cup and it's a Paralympic season and everything and I was like this is pretty crazy but I thought at that moment I get the strong feeling like okay this this is the thing what I have to do and this is like now now I have to try now I have to just just go and do that and uh, it was the moment like I kind of put all in like because I, I didn't have any funding at that moment because I just started so I I didn't have any funding from, from the Paralympic Committee or the Federation it was just like paying all by myself so I just get all my savings and okay let's go snowboarding <laughs> and, uh, and all my family and every, all my friends were like are you serious like are, are you really sure about that and I was like yes I will do that and I just put my all of my savings and like kind of okay just now we now we see what happens and um, back my bags and and went touring the World Cup just by myself and 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 uh, yeah it was a good year and I was learning a lot a lot about things in that year I was just I was ch- touring just by myself without any coach in, in the in the in the races. And uh, I did pretty well. I did pretty pretty well all the all the races, and 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 I got top ten in every race. Which means that uh, because it was a it was a Paralympic year, the Finnish Paralympic Committee uh, like were asking a wild card spot for me to the Paralympics, and. Uh, it went through. I I got the message in in 
when I was racing in, in Big White Canada, I got the message from the Finnish Paralympic Committee that, yeah, it, it went through, you are going to the Paralympics. And it was my first racing year, and I was like, like, now it's really happening big things, like, it's, it's just crazy, like, everything is happening in, like, pretty much in two months, two or three months, everything happened, like, I was touring the World Cup, I got the spot in the Paralympics, and, and uh, I got first sponsors and everything like that, and it was a crazy time, and actually, like the World Cup finals were in the in Spain in La Molina. It was just three weeks uh, before the Paralympics, and and there, there the race went really good. I and I, I got my first World Cup win, in in La Molina, and and just three weeks before, before Paralympics, and it was like, okay, it, like. <laughs> It was crazy. It was crazy. Then I then I thought like okay, like I really have the chance. I really have the chance, and in good day I will. I I can beat everyone in this circuit. And it it went to my head like really, really big time. How did you feel like the? Well, the first of all that you were in your first world, world cup competition, in Netherlands, and there was sort of yeah, like your kick-started the role a little bit as a role model probably Evan Strong was there in the yeah. same podium yeah. how did it make you feel that yeah, I'm really here that I just was watching this guy a couple of years ago on TV and I'm standing here and then you're actually going and you actually won him yeah yeah it was it was crazy it was really crazy and and uh, well <laughs> I could say that it was really confusing year like all together like but it it yeah I don't know I don't know it was it was really really uh, big moment and kind of emotional moment also because like there was a there was a guy who, who like with his uh, video clips like uh, get me excited about the sports and just like like going going out and hopping off off the hospital bed and trying things and 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 that was that was really 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 big thing in that podium see him in that podium and and and, and talk talk with him about these things and for now we are actually pretty good friends and we we have been talking about a lot a lot about these things yeah well, then you went to Sochi. You had that chance, and you you did well in the World Cup. You came as said you were third in the World Cup, and yeah. you had your first victory, and you had high hopes in Sochi, I guess. Yeah, well, I think it was kind of not kind of it, it was it was too high hopes, and and uh, yeah, because everything happened in so small time, like. The World Cup, got the Paralympic sport, everything, and and I got my first World Cup win, and then we actually, then I actually, uh, went to the Paralympics and and repre represent my country in sport. What is there in the first time? Like the para, uh, para snowboarding was first time in in Sochi, and 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 and. I was I was there representing representing my country and and I had like really big chance to win the win the win the medals over there so it went my head like really bad and I was like I I got like really big pressures and pretty much just because of myself I was thinking too much I think nobody else did it put any pressures to me but I was just thinking by myself like yeah I have the chance to win this and like what happened if I win, win the Paralympic gold and things like that and then and that was the main reason uh, like I can say that was the main reason why I was, was like why I was crashing over there all the time and 
the Paralympics was just a, just a disaster for me. And but I think, well, I got 11 spot in the Paralympics. It's it's not the worst, but it's not. It, it wasn't uh, what I expected from there. And uh, but I think that was uh, that was really good lesson for me, the first Paralympics and. And I, I learned it a lot from there. You think it's better to just to focus in the small period of time and the situation to trust your trust yourself, and that if you see the too big picture and you're starting to think about the future, it, it really affects your performance. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it affected my perform for performance in in Shotsi. It was like uh, that thinking was ruining the whole race for me. But like after that, like I said, it was really, really good lesson for me. And and when I got home from Sochi, I, I was just realizing that nothing comes for free. And and if you want to do something, you really have to work for that. And uh, yeah, after Sochi, I got, I got uh, like really good coach, really good. Uh, Snowboard course, a really good physical coach, uh, managers around me, and like then we had the team, and and uh, and uh, I had new mindset to work with, and uh, and then then like things started going in the right way. I think you said before the Sochi, you were able to first you put your own money in your own bank sort of a thing and then you got some sponsors who so who's been helping you out during your path here well yeah there's uh there is uh like uh really really big sponsors for uh for helping me out like uh like i said battery energy drink is one of my one of my main sponsors and uh, we've been doing really really big things uh with them and they are always holding my back Holding my back, and and, and uh, I think they are uh, really proud of me, and uh, and of course I'm I'm proud of them, and 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 uh, uh, that's the that's the brand who I want to work with, and uh, then my hometown, then my hometown Imatra, Imatra, they they've been really really proud of me also, and and uh, helping me helping me out, uh, and and. Uh, always always keeping my back and and of course of course like in the snowboarding there's like apex snowboards which is a snowboard cross snowboard cross brand and and uh, actually like custom made boards they they're always sending me fastest boards and 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 really really keen about what i'm doing so those are actually the main main things who are helping me still about the olympics how did, uh, how is the olympic atmosphere did it feel different you said of course that you're representing your your country and you had more pressure but other than that did it feel different to be in the olympics compared to the world cup for example yeah yeah like the atmosphere was yeah it was really different i mean because it was it was so big and like i I didn't realize. I didn't realize that it, it will be that big. Like in the opening ceremony, it was <laughs> it was funny because uh, I got Shotzi. Like I, I I arrived to Sochi and, and then we got all the team here and like yeah, let's go to the opening ceremony and, and I didn't really knew how it's going to be. And then we got to the opening ceremony and we were walking to the stadium and I was like. Whoa! There is like forty thousand people screaming for us, and like, like, what is this? This is this is like freaking big thing, and uh, because everything was new, and it, it, I was so confused. Like, what is this? And uh, the Olympic, like the Paralympic atmosphere, was also like, okay, there's just like all the same athletes, like and pretty much same kind of course where everything else like 
everywhere else. But it was, yeah, because it's Paralympics, everybody was maybe a little bit more nervous and uh, more competitive and like, like yeah, I don't show what axes I'm using and things like that. Like it, it was, it was funny and that it was also for me like that. And I was like extra nervous in 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 Shochi and and that's why <laughs> that's why I was <clears throat> struggling there so much. You told me that you changed your mindset after that experience. Can you tell me about that? Do you use certain methods or something? Well, yeah, kind of like. Mm, well, the first thing was like I I had to go through through my thoughts like uh, like what I was thinking and and uh, and what was wrong with those thoughts and uh, and what what I should do different and uh, actually from there it started like I I just like I just actually I think if I if I uh, if I like uh, got medals from Sochi uh, it could have been a bad thing for me. I'm thinking that right now. If if I if I got like if I'm if I was able to get uh, the medal from Shochi, I I I haven't like I mean it could have been like okay yeah I can win medals and like every day just like yeah bring me the competition I will win. That. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> but because I failed so bad in in Shochi, I, I realized, like I said before, like if you if you wanna if you wanna win the races, you really have to work, and and if you wanna have that what you want, you really have to work. Nothing comes for free, and that that was the mm, mindset what I got after Sochi, and uh, and I also and also got. Uh, Mm, a mental coach in my team, and uh, we started working working together, and it was just just like basic things, but like you have to realize those basic things. And and uh, when I got the right mindset, and and we started working with with my team, we we actually went went in a pr pretty good tr direction, and and uh, mm, I can say that. Uh, uh, the summer after Shochi, the training, training season, like off season training season, was was really good, and uh, we were like progressing a lot in that couple of months before before we went uh, to snow again in in, in the next season. And I, uh, in that moment, it was like huge jump in in the right direction, and I really felt felt that. You think that the mental or the physical side is more important, or you think they go sort of hand in hand? Well, I think I think they go uh, like hand in hand. But like, if I think about my sport, the snowboard cross, uh, the physical side is really really important. You have to train. You have to train hard and uh, and uh, train your skills, but. When you are in the competition, uh, I would say mm, in the competition uh, everything is like I, I would say ninety five percent about things is uh, between between your ears like uh, like when the gate drops like everything else you can train before the competition but not your mind like of course you can train your mind also but like but but. Uh, your mindset has to be uh, right in the competition, and and everything what happens in the competition, I would say it, it it's like the like the most important tool in the competition is your head. Let's talk about a little bit about the competition and the border cross. Yeah. What are the things you need to consider? What are the things you need there? You said the gate drops and then there's the other opponent at the same time and you have to slap. Tell me about it. Tell me about the whole race. Well, the whole race, like, 
the snowboard cross. Uh, well, of course, it's a speed speed sport, and uh, like there, you can't like the, there is no style points or anything like that. You have to be like you have to you have to be fastest. You have to beat your your <laughs> racing buddy <laughs> over there, and and uh, because of that, because of that, you have to you have to be like really hungry of hungry of winning and 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 also uh, really ready uh, for everything I mean because in in the heats you're you're riding against somebody in the same same track and and uh, you're pretty much uh, choosing the same lines you want to go in the fastest line and and you have to you have to get a kind of uh, uh, be hungrier than the other, and there, and uh, and the things, uh, and the things. What you need in snowboard cross, it's like uh, I would say, like when the K drops, you have to be just like kind of mad person, <laughs> mad person until the finish line. And and uh, that that makes a difference. Is it tactical? Do, do you have time to think if the other one is in front of you or something? Do you have some kind of tactical point of views? Well, race? yeah, you kind of you have to have. Of course, things happen like in seconds in the course, and like things changes a lot during the competition, or might might change. But like, if you are behind, you have to have a game plan. And uh, like we also we always have training training time before before the competition starts. So you you're learning the course, you're learning different lines, what is fast uh, faster than the others, and uh, and actually like if I'm behind, what is the what is the like uh, the point where I can pass the other? So. Always, you have to have a game plan. If you are if you are behind, or if you are front, you have to have a game plan. Like how how I'm, how I'm choosing my lines, that uh, the other one is like not able to pass me. And uh, yeah, that's 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 also a really tactical tactical game. But like, I mean, you have to live in the moment in the snowboard cross. What about you? How you prepare yourself? Before the competition, do you have any sort of method that you do all the time, every time, or something? Well, yeah, yeah. Like the competition day for me, it's uh, <coughs> like I have uh, I have uh, certain kind of routines all the time, and when I woke up in the competition day, I I put uh, the same songs. Uh, Every time, get that good warming up and be sure that everything is ready. I have all, all my boards are ready, all my all my other gears ready, and everything is on point. And I'm just getting in feeling with the with the music and 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 warming up, warming up. Uh, and those are really important things. And and when we get to the start area. Um, I think the music is music is more important thing for me and uh, like the most important thing for me and uh, just like if if I feel nervous I always put the music on and just get in the feeling and just just uh, like go through the course in my mind and and uh, all the all the things what can happen in the course and things like that and just listening to music getting ready and uh, and also we have uh, routines with my coach like what he is doing and what I'm doing and and uh, that's, that's actually really important thing with my coach that he he knows what I want and what I need and and, uh, and how our routines are going so yeah there is there's plenty of things in the competition day what I do always. 
What about between your heats? Do you change tactics occasionally that you see that oh, this would be better option or a line to take? Uh, well, yeah, kind of, kind of, because always there is like mm, we we always do time trials first, and then then sixteen best riders go to the brackets, like the finals, and then we get the brackets brackets in the finals, and and then you then you see the brackets like who is like against you and and uh, it, it could be like a, always like for us always have been like if you are first in the first turn you don't have to think about the others but like because it's so tight like I mean uh, everybody is so close to each other like and everything can, can happen and you really have to have a game plan so so yeah, we have different kind of ta tacticals for for uh, for other riders. So when I see when I see the other rider, I I know what what uh, he is doing, like or what he can do and what what he is maybe not doing. So so yeah, there is a there is a tactical thing, things in the in in between the different kind of hits. Yeah. Well, after Sochi, you really learned your lessons because the next season wasn't bad at all, right? Yeah, yeah, it was a world champ season, and and uh, and the whole season went went really good. Like I I got uh, like I think I was in the podium in every every World Cup race, and and then we got in the La Molina, where where was the world champ games? And uh, and there I I knew it that uh, that the course suits me really well. Suits me really well. And uh, and uh, from the first training, everything was was feeling really really good. And uh, I knew it like okay, this this might be my year now. And uh, yeah, from the from the. From the time trials, I I won the time trials, and and uh, then I was thinking, okay, now just just stay calm. Everything everything goes everything goes well if you are just calm and like don't don't mess your mind right now. You have done that already, <laughs> like, <laughs> like last year. <laughs> don't do it again. <laughs> so so just stay calm, and. Uh, and yeah, heat after heat, I won, I won my race, and and then we went to the big final, and there was a, there was a Evan Strong uh, against me in the big final, and uh, and that was that was a pretty good thing, a pretty big thing for me, and uh, like to be in the world champs big final with my with my idol, and. Yeah, when the gate drops, I get the better start. I I get like board board length ahead Evan, and, and then I get my get my place uh, to the finish line, and 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 realize that I I just won the world champs, and I just beat my idol in the world world championship, like big final. This is a pretty big thing, and and yeah. It was a it, it was a really big and emotional thing to get my first first gold medal from the world champs. You think these kind of big victories change you at all as a person, with or uh, as an athlete? Yeah, I think so. I think so. It changed uh, myself as a person. Like I'm, I kind of realized that okay, like. We were going in the right di direction, and and I, like we were doing, right things, and and uh, and actually that was, uh, uh, like right thing what I was thinking about, uh, about like uh, like, uh, I wasn't wrong when I was thinking thinking about like I'm able to do this. So. So, that kind of thought, maybe. Maybe and and uh, also also it it realized that like if you are just 
jump in the cold water and start doing things and and go to watch your dreams. It, it's not like big things can happen. Yeah. When did this uh, banked slalom be part of your sport? Also, it was 2015, actually, like year after year after Sochi. So in in those world champs, there were uh, also the, also the bank slalom and and uh, it was. It was like first time in the in the in the in the world champs and 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 I already felt like well it it kind of my it is it was and it is my kind of my second sport but like everybody's writing that because the the competitions are in the same places always so and in that moment it was like compounded points from World Cup like you kind of had to race both like snowboard cross and bank slalom um, but like it went really good also the bank slalom I got bronze medal I got bronze medal 2015 world champ so so it it didn't like it wasn't bad at all <laughs> yeah. at 2016 you must have been pretty happy that there was also this bank and slalom because you got these triplets right Uh, yeah, yeah, or like <laughs> the two crystal balls. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was uh, that was really big, big thing. Yeah, I was happy. I don't know, like, like I've always think it. Uh, I was always thinking about like the snowboard cross is my main thing, and that's what I want to focus. And uh, but it went pretty good. The bank slalom also, and 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 actually. With those three crystal globes, uh, the the whole season was the whole season was really tight. I think in the last race there was three or four people able to get those globes. Okay. Yeah, it was so tight and it was so exciting. That was like really, really uh, crazy because we were so so tight. Like uh, everybody got. Uh, points like I said like four four people were able to get those clubs and 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 then then kind of everybody else failed it and I I I, I didn't fail <laughs> I didn't fail and I, I got those clubs and and it was it was really crazy because it was so tight and and I I still got all those three so yeah it was pretty amazing Amazing year, yeah. and then there's also this letter X. Yeah. What does it mean to you? Well, it it <clears throat> it means me a lot. It means me a lot because, like, I remember when we were kids, like when we were, when we were really young, we were watching this like from the, from the TV. I don't even remember what channel it was, but like X Games. What is this? This is this is really rad and this is like this is crazy and uh, from that point I was thinking like like if I'm ever able to go there then 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 the world is crazy I mean I mean it was so big thing and and it it was it felt like kind of so far away thing and uh and uh also like all the all just all the big snowboarders big big extreme sport people can go there and it, it has been always a really exciting and big thing for me and and then then i realized that okay i'm i'm standing here at the x games start gate like what is this <laughs> What is this now? Now the world is pretty crazy, so, so, yeah. And a gold medal. And a gold medal. It was. It was like. Uh, well, I I got my first X Games in two thousand fifteen, actually. Actually, and 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 that was that was pretty crazy moment. Also, when I checked my emails and there was like invite for the X Games, X Games from Nowhere Cross, and I was like, yeah, is this, <laughs> is this like, is this a real thing? I just got X Games, X Games invite, and uh, yeah, we went to the X Games, first X Games 2015, but there, there, 
there uh, in the big final I was I was crashing crashing uh, with the other rider in the first turn and then I think I was sixth I was sixth but like uh, then we went there again in 2016 and and uh, and that was that was really really crazy and and because the course the snowboard cross course is like biggest ever the biggest ever and like uh, craziest ever it's it's like like the biggest sums ever like and uh, I think yeah I think that <laughs> you can't find that kind of course anywhere else than the X Games and the first trainings was like I'm stra staring from the start gate that the starts starts the straight where it's like uh, 25 meter long jump like like yeah that's the biggest one I've ever like <laughs> ever seen maybe so so and I should hit that now so like yeah what I should do <laughs> and and, and uh, yeah I can tell I, I was really scared in the, in the first training training session but I then I just then I just decide like okay if if I get injured I <laughs> I get injured in X game so so yeah let's go for it and then I just drop in and and uh, and hit hit the whole course all the biggest jumps and and uh, I I can say it was like really crazy feeling when I get to the finish line. Yeah, the adrenaline rush was like I haven't got that kind of adrenaline rush ever. I was like, <laughs> I was just like sitting down in the fields, like I just hit that, like I just hit that course, like the X Games course and the biggest line, like that's like no, no, I can die happily. <laughs> and yeah, then the then the scary part was like, gone, gone. And uh, then I I really felt like okay I can I can just hit that course like even it's peak it's perfectly pillared and then and I'm I'm able to do that even if there's like freaking big jumps and everything just that course suits me perfectly and uh, and I got the strong feeling like okay if you just do your do your thing and do your job like don't think about the others and and you're you're able to do do really big things now and and in the time trials i i got the first pro first spot in the time trials and actually it was like it was crazy it was four seconds ahead the second one in in the one minute course it was like like it felt like what there must be something wrong with that with the timing or something like that yeah. but I didn't know, like I didn't know how I did that good time, but then I realized, okay, if I if I just do my job, it it will be something big this year, and and everything went pretty pretty well, and 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 got first over the finish line in the finals, and and won won the X Games gold medal. It was it was something unreal. And it, it's still something unreal. I can't, I can't, I can't really think about it. Like it, it's like, yeah, it was something really, really unreal when they put the X Games gold medal in my neck. Yeah, you're. I understood that you're a musical person, and you've been yeah. <clears throat> uh, performing in the Imatra also up in the stage. What was the last time you were playing your X Games guitar? <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, I'm just playing, uh, I'm yeah. just playing at home. It looks like, rad. Yeah, so it, it is, it is. And then that's, that's, that's really like, that's a really beautiful thing. And I, I, I never ever gonna lose that guitar. That's, that's, that's actually a pretty good guitar. And and uh, well, but I I decided that I just play that at home. That I just play that at home. But the uh, last time I think it was, it maybe it was just a month ago, 
when I was home <laughs> last time. But <laughs> oh, yeah. well, then, I, then I played something with my X Games guitar. <laughs> you said that the jumps were huge. Uh, you think there's a danger that they're building too big obstacles, too big jumps for the races, that just for the spectators? Because I saw in Sochi already that there were pretty bad accidents in ski cross, for example, because yeah. the jumps were so big that kind of as a spectator, it, it felt like they're too big. It doesn't make any sense. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, yes and no. Yes and no. Uh, because, like, if I if I... If I think about X Games course, it was like big jumps, everything, and uh, it felt really good. I mean, as a rider, it felt really good, and everything was built it so good that even if it looks like it's huge, huge jump, but uh, it actually like it. It's flying. You are flying perfectly in the sweet spot, and everything will die like that. Then, it, then, then it's safe if it's built right, but if it's like big and build it wrong, then then it's sketchy. Then it's really sketchy. And uh, like I don't, I don't know. There is there is like uh, different kind of thoughts about those big jumps and everything. You can in in the snowboard cross, you can hurt yourself really badly uh, in the in the small futures also. If the uh, like I would say the more scary thing it's like uh, some kind of roller straight like just just rollers like roller after roller and then you lose your rhythm over there and uh, and just crashing the rollers that's that's way much worse than than crash like 30 meter jump I would say. Somebody, somebody else can be like have different thoughts about that, but uh, that's that's what I would say. But I don't know, I don't know. I I just like big big courses and and uh, and like when when there is uh, like challenging. But like I mean, uh, in in the Olympics in the X Games, they always. Mm, Build courses like with safety in their mind. Even if they are really, really big, they, they always think about safety. So I'm not too worried about that. Maybe in the if I if I watch the slow style competitions yeah. and and bigger and things like that when they are like because if you want to win something in this this you have to do like quattro what it what it is like it's something really crazy yeah. and because everyone every everybody want wants wants to have a gold medal they will try that and that that makes the sport dangerous i would say so in the slope style slope style side i would say they because like the big uh, jumps are getting bigger and bigger all the time that makes things mm, dangerous because it, you are able to try more like yeah. harder tricks from from the biggest jump. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in your sport, the equipment is very important. Also, yeah. it has to be in good shape. The whole board or pulka, as you <laughs> say, in switch in yeah. Finnish, as you mentioned. Yeah. That in the para world, you also need to have the other equipment yeah. in order, yeah. like your leg. Yeah. So. Uh, how often you have to fix your your uh, prosthetic? Well, like uh, the prosthetic, uh, what I'm using in the snowboarding and and uh, in the other sports, it's like it really has to be in a good shape all the time. And, and I have to have uh, spare parts with me, and and uh, because I uh, I kind of keep breaking that all the time, like uh, when you're landing some jumps. Uh, like if you knuckle some jumps or or you're going too deep, it, there's a really high impact for the for the prosthetic leg, and and, and it's just carbon fiber, like just carbon <laughs> fiber. But it's funny, funny like last last year in the in the world champs training training session, I I, I broke my broke my prosthetic angle 
when I was crashing. And I, well, I was pretty glad it was like prostating angle. It was going really, really badly. It, like, it break down, the carbon fiber break down like snap. So if there, if there have been, like if there is able body leg, it, it, it should have go really bad. So, but I, I'm glad that I, I have prostate legs. So I, <laughs> I just had my spare parts with me. I just changed my leg, and and, and then I was in the slopes again. But yeah, uh, I have to, I have to have uh, spare par- parts a lot with me when I'm traveling. Has it ever bailed out when you're riding? Has there not been any troubles? Uh, well, not, not that kind of troubles with my snowboarding leg because it's it's like I mean I uh, I can hang hang with this leg from somewhere with my snowboarding leg and it's not like I I don't lose my snowboarding leg but but my hang around leg it's different <laughs> that's different <laughs> actually there is a when we were a couple of years ago when we were in Sasva and in snowboard camp and. Uh, we always do like recovering football, okay. and then we were playing football, and I was trying to kick it up, or kick the ball, and then just snap out my leg, and my leg was actually uh, actually flying so much uh, further than the ball. So, so, so with my other legs, there there can be issues, but with, but not not okay. with my snowboarding leg. Yeah. Do you ever make choke with the buddies? about your prosthetics or anything? Well, plenty of jokes all the time. It's it's like, <laughs> it's not a biggie for me, so so I'm, I'm, I'm choking always. Yeah. Well, now we are in 2017 and the year has been good also for you. Yeah. You won the World Championships both in yeah. the Paracross and also in the Banquet Slot. Yeah. So congratulations for that. Thank you, thank you. It was, it, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Crazy World Champs games, yeah. And also now in Puha, uh, uh, you won again. Yeah. And, uh, how did it make you feel that now you had this competition in Finland? It yeah. When I heard that we get the competition in Finland, like World Cup, World Cup in Finland, it was like it was a really big thing, and I uh, like that I'm able to race in my in my homeland and and pretty much in my backyard. Because I live in Rukaski Resort, like in all the winter seasons, so it was really big thing, and and everything, everything went really good. Like I mean, the course was perfect, and uh, and the organization of the race was perfect. Everything was working really good, and and pretty much all the riders from the from the from the world came came to compete there and, and they they said that it was it was uh, easily the best World Cup which which is like big words uh, they said it, it was uh, like easily the best World Cup what uh, what it's like what we have had ever so so those kind of words sounds pretty good like sounds pretty amazing for me and I, I was I was really really uh, proud to race in my in my home country and and uh, uh, also because I, I did pretty good results it it felt it felt extra good like uh, the wor- the first ever uh, Paris Nobel Cross race uh, in Finland and uh, I won that it was it was pretty pretty good pretty good feeling and and and. That's how it should be. <laughs> it's super. Yeah. Now it's good to have the flags behind you. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> behind me too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So a big year is coming, 2018, and preparation for that has started for sure. Yeah. And uh, as I've said, heard you mentioning that you learn from sort of mistakes. Yeah. Maybe we can't say the mistakes, yeah. but as it happened in the X Games, and now there's going to be another Olympic games so how do you feel about that the next olympic games well of course it's uh <clears throat> it's a big season it's a big comp like uh big competitions like i mean the big games are coming because everybody's keen about uh, olympics and paralympics but 
but now I feel like like uh, these past four years has been really good and and uh, I've learned a lot about things and and my th- like uh, we are working I think we are working in the, in the right direction with, with our team and and uh, things like that so I feel like like I don't wanna I don't wanna worry about uh, about those games and I don't wanna uh, really put any expectations or any pressures for those games uh, because I realize like like I, I wanna I wanna enjoy every training day I want to enjoy every competition day no matter is if it's a world cup if it's x games or if it's if it's just like if it's a Finnish championships or whatever or is it just like race mm-hmm. training I want to enjoy that in the same way and I want to get excited at the same way and uh, I think if I if I manage to do that uh, the results will be good in 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 uh, South Korea also because yeah because there's all the same riders uh, all the same riders the course is pretty much the same what we have uh, everywhere else so why I should be thinking something different in the Paralympics than in the World Cups yeah yeah have you learned to say the name of the spot already? Uh, I say South Korea because I can't yeah. really pronounce it. Well, I, I say oh, always I say Pyeongchang, but I don't know if it's re- wrong yeah. or right. But I will say Pyeongchang. Pyeongchang, something like that. I guess yeah. it's, it's a bit difficult. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a so, just amazing to have you here. I'm, I feel that my face hurts. I've been <laughs> smiling and laughing so much. It's just. Oh, it, it's it's awesome to have you here and Thank you. just hear about that mindset you kind of had already yeah. before the accident and after that that you have built yourself. But I have a couple of more questions yeah. for you. Yeah. Uh, how often you think how life would have been different without the accident? Uh, not too often, but yeah, I'm thinking that. Like I, I've been thinking that. And uh, I think it could be way much different without the accident, because before before the accident I was already working. And, uh, I was like uh, I was sound designer. I was working in TV TV broadcasting company and touring with the band. So and like sport things was more hobby than 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 anything else. It was kind of I didn't uh, thought about anything like competitive sport anymore but when I when I got in the motor shuttle crash and everything everything after that then I got a chance then I got the chance and uh, I think about like why not why not and uh, then I then I put all in like I said and and uh, uh, well I go out and try things and now I'm here so I would say it it could be way much different without without the crash. How you see yourself uh, in the future? Let's say twenty years from now, you said you work with sound. Yeah. Do you think that's something that you want to go back to, or you do you think about it at all? Well. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Like, and and I've learned that, um, and I've learned that I, I wanna, I wanna live in the moment, and and uh, I wanna do, I wanna, I wanna do this what I do now, and like uh, get best out of it, and uh, and uh, I enjoy this. I I. <laughs> I never thought I'd, that I would be a personal voter any day, and uh, now I am. I really want to enjoy this, and and uh, I enjoy like I uh, I want to enjoy this. Uh, like uh, I don't know how long it lasts, so I want to enjoy every day, every moment, and and when it stops, 
uh, I, I find something else. We'll see what it is then. Yeah. yeah. This is the attitude I love because yeah. I think so <laughs> many people are just thinking about the future and then whether and then I retire and I do this and that. Yeah. And you never know. I, yeah. Just living in the moment. Yeah. I think it's very important. Yeah, because I learned life. like maybe I had, like, maybe maybe I was planning planning things when I was when I was young. Like I have to do this and I have to do that and at this point I I have to be there. But then, all of a sudden, I was just riding with my motorcycle and naps. The whole life changed. So, so I think like you have to live your life like that. If you die today, you you you're happy, and that's that's what I'm now. Like I'm I'm reaching my like I'm. I'm uh, working towards my dreams. Uh, I've reached like some of them, and I'm I'm enjoying I'm enjoying my life. And uh, uh, if something happened today, happens today, I don't have to say that I should do something. So. What are your keys to success? You are very successful <laughs> <laughs> snowboarder at the moment. <laughs> My keys to success. I don't. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> actually, I don't know. <coughs> uh, well, the keys. Keys are like. <coughs> I think. Um, one of the keys is just like, trust yourself. That's that's the most important, <coughs> important key. If you don't trust yourself, if you don't believe yourself, nobody else is not doing that. If you don't do, so. So that's the most important key what I what I can say. So just just believe yourself and trust yourself and and uh, then the others are going to do that also. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. Yeah. What makes you laugh? What makes what <laughs> makes me laugh? Lots of things. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of things. The life makes me laugh. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much, Matti. Thank you. I am just honored to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Thank Glad you. to be here. Thank you.